I would like to bring uh, a Paz Lozano to our last uh, presentation that would be on um, lead coalition safeguard requirements. And this is closely related to our tree's presentation. You would know, you would see soon uh, why I'm telling you this. So um, I would like to welcome uh, Paz to present um, the safeguard requirements under our trees. Um, and I believe it's maybe two colleagues, Paz and Leon Ward, who join us from Emergent. Um, Paz is a senior vice president of forests uh, in Emergent, and Leon Ward is the director of the fund management and reporting also at Emergent. And, and they are also part of the LEAF coalition. Thank you so much, Victoria. Um, I'll start off the presentation and let me share my screen really quickly. But just to clarify, we won't be presenting on the actual art trees safeguard requirements um, as Lucia has already uh, wonderfully done that. Um, but we will be uh, talking about how LEAF um, uh, uses the art trees standard in order to guarantee that there is high integrity um, uh, there are high integrity requirements met when it comes to safeguards for any credits that we transact under the LEAF coalition. So thank you so much. Let me share my presentation and hopefully everyone will be able to see my screen. Um, please let me know if you have any issues. Uh, we, we can perfect. see it clearly. Perfect. Um, all right. So I just wanted to give a little bit of context um, for everyone on the call uh, about you know, who Emergent is and, and what LEAF is. Um, so it's important to, to just land uh, in, in this kind of information or, or provide some clarity on this. Um, Emergent, uh, the organization that Dion and I work for, is a nonprofit organization that provides a transaction platform for Art Trees credits. As Lucia mentioned, we are effectively uh, one of the buyers, one of the many kinds of buyers that can exist for Art Trees credits. Um, we, as Emergent, we buy and pay for uh, jurisdictional red plus carbon credits that are issued under the tree standard. And we sell those credits to corporate purchasers and sovereign donors who are participants in the LEAP coalition. Um, we're also um, the administrative coordinator of the LEAF Coalition, uh, and we facilitate those transactions for LEAF participants, as I mentioned. The LEAF Coalition itself um, was, was uh, formed in April of last year, and the goal is really to halt tropical deforestation by financing large-scale tropical forest protection. Um, and we are bringing together forest nations, uh, companies, and donor governments to facilitate these transactions of high integrity trees credits. Uh, the LEAF Coalition, I think it's important to emphasize, the LEAF Coalition is not a greenhouse gas uh, program or a standard, unlike VERA or ART. Um, we are just a collection of different buyers and participants in, in effectively the carbon market. So. All trees credits that are transacted by LEAF are issued by the ART program under the trees standard. A little bit more information um, for everyone on how we work, how Emergent and LEAF works, um, just really high level to make sure it's clear. Um, so effectively we start by aggregating demand for uh, trees credits. So LEAF corporates and sovereigns, um, within that are participants in LEAF coalition um, indicate their demand or their interest in purchasing uh, trees credits from different jurisdictions and, and forest governments that are also participants in LEAF. Um, once sufficient demand for credits has been, um, has been aggregated and, and there's a solid value proposition that we can provide to a jurisdiction, then we move into the phase of um, negotiating and ultimately signing uh, an emissions reduction purchase agreement with uh, you know, both the corporate buyers and the jurisdictions uh, who will be selling their, their trees credits. Um, then it's the hard work for the jurisdictions to actually reduce deforestation, to implement activities um, that, that really generate results and emissions reductions. Um, and they have to do so in conformance with the TREES standard requirements, which includes the safeguards, which uh, Lucia has already uh, talked about. 
Um, once those results have actually been achieved, once uh, uh, the jurisdiction has monitored the emissions reductions, um, then they actually go through a process of independent validation and verification against the tree's standard requirements. And if upon successful validation and verification, um, trees credits can be issued by art and then ultimately retired on the art registry when they're transferred to a buyer or um, or when the jurisdiction receives payment, they can, um, for results, they can also retire the credits um, in their own accounts. So this is an important um, part of the process. And, and this is where art, uh, we, we rely on the art uh, program in order to uh, not only issue the trees credits that we transact, but, but to also uh, provide the platform, the registry for retirement to ensure no double counting. Um, once those trees credits are issued, Ultimately, the emergent, uh, we, we transfer funds to jurisdictions, uh, to the LEAF jurisdiction that, that has entered into this purchase agreement and delivered us the credits. Um, and we do that through a financial intermediary who then oversees, monitors, and, and reports on the funds, uh, the use of funds according to fund, uh, best management practices um, for fund management. Um, and those funds ultimately end up being reinvested in sustainable development and forest protection, um, generally speaking, what the jurisdictions decide to use those funds for within that kind of broad category. Um, and that reinvestment in, in, um, in these different activities ultimately can impact the lives and livelihoods of people in those jurisdictions. And we hope creates this virtuous cycle where more emissions reductions can be achieved and more payments can then be delivered um, for the results that uh, the jurisdictions can um, demonstrate under the art tree standard. So this is a high level uh, uh, kind of flow of how, how things work under leaf and art, or not art, leaf uh, and emergent. Um, so what are leaf safeguard requirements? Um, I think this is something that we want to highlight in, in two kind of phases, and I'll speak more about the first phase, a pre-credit issuance phase, and uh, my colleague Dion will speak more to uh, what happens post-credit issuance and, and post the delivery of um, funds to, to the jurisdiction. So pre-credit issuance, um, you know, the, the simplest way to say this is that um, we ultimately require that any jurisdiction that participates in a LEAF transaction meets the requirements of the ART uh, program, the TREES standard. So TREES was selected by LEAF um, because of the buyer's confidence in its high integrity requirements, and uh, in particular because of the um, really robust safeguard requirements that exist within the standard. Um, so, like I said, any jurisdictions that transact credits um, through uh, through Mergent and LEAF um, have to have those credits independently validated and verified under trees and issued by ART. Um, Post-credit issuance and delivery, so once, once the jurisdiction has actually demonstrated they met the requirements, they've issued credits, um, and they've delivered those credits, we've paid them, uh, then there's a different set of safeguards that comes in, and this is actually what is really specific to LEAF. Um, like I said, the first phase is really governed by ART, but we do require that jurisdictions effectively participate in the ART program. Um, however, once the funds are, are transferred, there are safeguards that apply to uh, monitoring the use of proceeds under LEAF. Um, so those fund management reporting safeguards are a LEAF specific requirement, and um, we take measures to ensure that there's no duplication of safeguards reporting requirements with art trees. Um, we recognize there can be some overlap, but we wanna make sure that efforts are complementary and they're not duplicative. Um, and finally, uh, you know, it's important to note that post the issue, post first credit issuance or post other you know, issuances, jurisdictions are expected to continue to demonstrate compliance with the trees safeguard requirements and just all trees requirements um, throughout their, the entire crediting period lifetime under art, which is five years. And also, um, you know, uh, to ensure that they deliver the credits that have been included um, for those vintage years under the uh, emissions reductions purchase agreement, the ERPA. So just to delve into a little bit more depth on, on what we, um, what information we require related to, um, to pre-credit issuance uh, in, within that kind of time frame, so I'll delve into this in a little more detail before I pass it over to Dion. So, 
I want to kind of clarify this because I know there's there's definitely been some confusion um, on these different requirements um, prior to ERPA signing, prior to signing a purchase agreement with a jurisdiction and, and after signing a purchase agreement. Um, so I want to go into a little depth on what we ask for related to, to kind of some of the safeguards that Lucia mentioned in her last presentation. Ultimately, prior to ERPA signing, as a merchant, as a buyer, um, we are really interested in understanding what kinds of benefit distribution mechanisms or agreements or plans um, have already been developed or under development within the jurisdiction. We also are really interested in understanding what the processes um, are that have been implemented or under development within that jurisdiction for stakeholder engagement and consultation. And we're also interested in the status of the implementation plans, whether or not they uh, jurisdictions have already finalized those or if they're in progress, right? So we ask for information related to those categories, those broad, three broad categories of, of things um, that relate to the art trees standard requirements. Uh, so that we have some visibility into the readiness of the jurisdiction and what still needs to be completed before they can actually um, ultimately meet all the art trees requirements and issue trees credits. So this is really the purpose that, that are, these pre-ERPA signing requirements serve is to, to provide us some, some level of information on this. Um, so for jurisdictions that have already completed or initiated the art validation and verification process under ART, they've actually finalized their documentation and submitted it to the ART Secretariat. We just ask for copies of um, the relevant information or documents that relate to benefit distribution, stakeholder engagement, and implementation plans. Um, but for those jurisdictions that are still in the process of preparing to meet the TREES requirements and preparing their documentation and their monitoring reports, et cetera, under ART and have not yet submitted that documentation, um, prior to signing an ERPA with them, we ask that they provide us essentially a status check or an update on what they are doing to uh, be able to finalize these different um, uh, components um, before they issue, you know, trees credits, right? Uh, just to understand the timeline for delivery and the timeline that it might take them in order to meet the standard requirements. Um, I want to just emphasize here that we do not require jurisdictions to submit finalized benefit sharing mechanisms or plans or any finalized stakeholder engagement processes or implementation plans prior to signing the ERPA. We just ask for effectively a status check on where they are now and what their plans are to ensure that those things will be in place um, within a reasonable time frame to ensure they can deliver trees credits when they have met, when they have uh, promised to deliver them. So I want to make sure that that's very clear. Uh, we don't want to rush that. We don't want to ask for that to be done in two months because at the end of the day, this could compromise the jurisdiction's ability to meet the standard requirements themselves. And they really jurisdictions must uh, conduct you know all the consultations and. Um, develop benefit sharing agreements in conformance with TREES requirements. So we want to make sure that that's done uh, correctly and the time that's needed uh, to do that correctly is, is actually um, taken. So that's something I want to emphasize. For post-ERPA signing, um, jurisdictions must demonstrate um, compliance with TREES safeguard requirements. So like I said before, we, we only, we only uh, deliver payments to jurisdictions once they've actually been able to demonstrate that they've successfully um, passed validation and verification against the TREES requirements. So moving on just really quickly to highlight um, some, some different topics that, um, uh, a sample of different topics that are priorities for leaf buyers. Um, this is not to say that, uh, not all of the tree safeguard requirements are important. They are all important for leaf buyers, but here are a few that I think are really important to emphasize that, that buyers are paying particular attention to and some of the ones that, that Lucia already has emphasized and mentioned in her presentation. So one is the full and effective participation of relevant stakeholders. Um, this is something that is extremely important for all of the buyers involved, that indigenous people in particular and local communities in particular are consulted and involved in the process and are broadly supportive of the program and initiatives. Um, we also care about benefit distribution mechanisms, plans or agreements um, that, that are developed with stakeholders in a participatory manner 
Uh, and like I said, in particular, with a focus on Indigenous people, local communities, and, and other marginalized groups. And uh, we also care about the promotion of gender equity across uh, the implementation of safeguards um, and the implementation of trees, uh, uh, of the Red Plus activities. And finally, uh, we also um, are really interested in ensuring that, um, that the, you know, the rights and knowledge of Indigenous people in local communities are respected. And these are all things that the Art Tree Standard effectively guarantees through uh, their processes. So, um, but this is a particular reason why buyers um, are really supportive of art and the tree standard. So I'll pass this over to Dion to talk a little bit more about the post issuance requirements as they relate to um, safeguards for fund monitoring and reporting. Dion? Thank you. Thank you, Paz, and thank you, uh, Victoria, you and Red staff, and all the participants for giving us an opportunity to clarify some of these concepts. Uh, so I'm going to talk mostly just in a few minutes about the use of proceeds and post-credit issuance requirements. Uh, pause next slide, please. Uh, to, to localize us on the cycle, which Pause already presented uh, in the last two, five and six of the circle, we have the, the financial intermediary who we uh, depend on to distribute funds uh, in alignment with the use of proceeds plan, which has been defined by the host jurisdiction. This is after the verification, after issuance verification, and then this process of disbursement. I'm gonna focus on this, as well as the reinvestment and the oversight and monitoring of the use of proceeds. So next slide, please. So there's some premises that, which was, Paz has already gone over and, 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 and the importance to, um, to understand Art trees, safeguards, and that this is focusing on post transaction of emission reduction credits uh, safeguards, what we call fund management and reporting, uh, our, our, our jargon here. Uh, and it's essentially the financial intermediary that ensures that key financial, social, and environmental safeguards are reinforced all along the, the, the activity chain from when they receive the funds, their internal policies, and then when it's distributed to implementing partners. Uh, Paz mentioned that, that you're providing, respecting country autonomy, sorry about that, and uh, that the host jurisdiction is the one that defines the use of proceeds within uh, their existing NDC ambition and sustainable development goals. Um, I'm gonna discuss a little bit what some of the variation and how that might differ potentially from what the, the crediting period activities are, um, but I'll, I'll go into that in a minute. We are, as Paul said, very wary of not having duplication of what the verification body is looking, bodies are looking at and coordination with what the FI is monitoring. Uh, we recognize within the five-year period that there is some overlap, there, there will be, and it's important for us to just continue that coordination, not to provide uh, opportunities for the existing frameworks to be emphasized and for there not to be uh, undue effort, extra work for either the host jurisdiction or the implementing partners. Uh, LEAF is, is as, as, as we said, um, and emergent specifically is working with financial intermediaries to look at the uh, results from the country reinvesting in that virtuous cycle, as we said, for forest protection by plus activities and, and or other uh, sandal development activities. Next slide, please. This we think is a, is a helpful Venn diagram that helps lay out uh, both temporally and thematically contrasting the art implementation period, the crediting period, and how there's activities that where the art tree safeguards are applied. Then there's the use of proceeds, which we are monitoring through the FI, that in some instances, it will be the same uh, reinforcing existing Red Plus programs and ongoing policies. In some instances, there'll be new initiatives that the government chooses to fund uh, and, and that go beyond the Red Plus plans might include sustainable development goals in alignment with NDCs, et cetera. So I just wanted to let that settle in a little because it's, it's important that we understand we're looking at the monitoring of use of proceeds. That's what the fund management and reporting world that I work with uh, entails. Next slide. So we're hammering home once again that part of compliance uh, is 
first meeting our tree safeguards. And then uh, we, we have some, we were talking about any additional safeguards within the emission reductions purchase agreement. There's a stipulation around some additional uh, financial safeguards that reinforce uh, Cancun safeguards specific to anti-corruption, anti-bribery, and anti-money laundering measures. Those are uh, enforced on down through the use of proceeds for the implementing partner activities as well. Uh, financial intermediaries are an important actor. We've mentioned we're leveraging their capabilities that have been proven through their GCF accredited entity uh, accreditation process that ensures robust frameworks. And we lean on those existing policies and frameworks for the financial management, oversight, accountability, as well as their safeguards monitoring capacity. Uh, as, as long as the proceeds are flowing from the sale of emission reductions uh, through the financial intermediary, there is that drawdown of safeguards and oversight that is, extends to implementing partners. Uh, so we asked the financial intermediary to look specifically at human and labor rights, um, any um, discrimination or abuse is prevented, and they are once again compliant, comply with those financial safeguards which we mentioned. I believe one more slide. Uh, that the financial intermediary capabilities, both and the safeguards path and monitoring capacity refer to their internal processes. We have a list of 10 key capacities that relate to both their processes as well as the engagement and distribution and monitoring of the activities that the downstream implementing partners uh, as they're using the proceeds for activities and actions on the ground. So code of ethics, procurement policies, preventing financial irregularities internally and downstream, payment procedures, know your customer checks, internal controls, uh, investigation procedures and grievance redress mechanisms. We don't mean to, to have this be duplicative and we want to be able to reference existing trees mechanisms, um, the importance of, of, of making sure that it's suitably communicated uh, both internally and downstream for all participants to be able to uh, raise any issues. Um, external audit function for the fiduciary responsibility is extremely important. Systems on monitoring reporting on the use of funded activities. We lean on the in intermediaries, capacities and capabilities. Well, for that, as well as their existing policies, um, the, the IFC policies are referenced uh, within the, the GCF accredited entity framework on ENS risk. Uh, monitoring, as well as uh, prevention of sexual harassment exploitation. So that is a summary of a lot, um, but I really wanted to, to have the opportunity to focus on the separation of those, those different periods and the use of proceeds versus the uh, crediting period uh, verification that precedes it. So with that, I think um, that ends our presentation.